What's up guys, today I'm going to be doing the ADC build guide. Uh, to start we're going to go in the Drongo, I'm not going to waste too much time. Uh, the way that I would build Drongo uh, to start would be to get some attack speed via Liberator. It gives you some lifesteal, attack speed. Uh, you get the cleanse with the shield, can be really nice for trading. Uh, Drongo scales very nice off attack speed because of his E. And it could just be a really, all, uh, really good crest overall. The first item, the first actual item I would go on Drongo is Vanquisher. Uh, it gives you some crit chance, the execute if people are low, some pen and some power. Uh, just a solid item for Drongo. You get a lot of benefit from the passive because Drongo has a little bit of dot damage on all of his abilities uh, due to his passive, which allows you to really practice very easily, uh, especially getting some stragglers at the end of team fights and things like that. A very good item on Drongo and would highly recommend going it first. The next item I would go is Sky Splitter. Uh, you can debate going uh, either Tainted Rounds or Lightning Hawk in this spot uh, instead for Drongo. Like you can go something like this and then go Sky Splitter third. Uh, both of these options are really strong. I typically go Sky Splitter into Tainted Rounds just so that I don't have to worry about other people getting anti heal. Ten rounds gives you some crit, some power, some attack speed. Lightning Hawk is very similar. The difference is that Lightning Hawk gives you anti, or uh, Lightning Hawk gives you a little bit of a slow and some burst damage every fourth auto, whereas Tainted Rounds gives you some anti heal and then a little bit of extra damage uh, on your auto attacks. One thing to note is that the damage from the Tainted Rounds is magical damage, so it can be useful in games where people are going a lot of physical defense, uh, which is pretty typical right now. A lot of the meta builds have like three physical defense items for a lot of the frontliners and the tanks. But the Sky Splitter allows you to kill tanks. It just gives you some damage based on their current HP. It allows you to kind of burst some people down, uh, specifically tanks, which is your job as an ADC is to kill the tanks. So Sky Splitter kind of allows you to do that. Tainted Rounds or Lightning Hawk, either third or second, uh, and then Sky Splitter in the third slot, uh, something like this. Either one is fine. Again, I typically go Sky Splitter in the Tainted Rounds. Fourth item, kind of similar to Sky Splitter, is a must build on pretty much every single ADC. It just gives you the percent pen that you need, uh, and then gives you extra damage against tanks, which again is your job to kill. Uh, it gives you some crit chance again, uh, scales very well with Drongo passive, helps your proc the Vanquisher, get some more dot off your passive. Just a really, really strong item. The last item, you can kind of flex uh, either Terminus or Imperator. Imperator is a little bit more damage, it increases the damage on your crit chances, uh, and then also gives you a lot of base power. Terminus is a little bit less base power, uh, but it gives you a shield uh, if you're at full HP, and then it gives you some lifesteal. If you're at full HP and you start lifestealing, you'll get a little bit of an overshield uh, for a little bit. Uh, this can be a strong item, especially if you're up against like a little bit more of a poke heavy comp, since you get the little shield and then the lifesteal. Uh, if you want just straight damage, I would recommend going Imperator in the last slot, something like this. Uh, alternative options that you can go in certain games, you can get uh, Dread, Mesmer, or Stonewall. Stonewall is another fantastic item. Uh, all three of these are really good defensive options. Dread is more for defending against magical char uh, characters, specifically uh, assassins or heroes that want to 100 to 0 you, uh, such as like Countess or a Howitzer. He might try to boop you into a ult and then you just kind of die. Uh, Dread kind of avoids you that from occurring and be a really good defensive option while still providing a solid amount of damage. Mesmer gives you one spell shield, which basically blocks one spell uh, every 60 seconds. This can be really good against uh, characters like Countess, who are trying to, again, 100 to 0 you, or really heavy poke characters, or characters like Morigesh, who, if they can't hit the right click, they can't ult you. So if you have a spell shield that absorbs the right click, uh, she can't ult you until she's able to mark you again, so it kind of buys you a little bit of time. Could be a really good item. Uh, also really good against characters like Fang Mao and things like that, that uh, also really try to one-shot you. Uh, the last item that you could possibly go in this last slot is Stonewall. Uh, Stonewall is just a really good item. It gives you some physical defense, some HP, uh, some base health regen, which is kind of like not super relevant, but it is nice to have. 
but it gives you uh, the best part about this item is that it gives you a nice little stun. Whenever you're at 40% HP, it gives you a AOE stun around your character. So if you're against a assassin, for example, or you're getting dove really hard by some physical tanks, maybe something like a Zarus or a Grux, perhaps, uh, you can use this. And then if they go on you and you get low, it gives them a stun, and then you can kind of create some space or just trade some damage out before you die. Uh, very strong item, really high physical defense, a uh, really good item. The secondary passive, you get a little bit of mitigation against physical ability as well which can also be really nice uh, but typically you just buy it for the the stun and the base prot so you don't get killed it's especially good against characters like Fang Mao, uh, Kalari, Grux, uh, Greystone these characters that really try to just stick to you or they try to assassinate you can be really strong it's also deceptively good against things like Countess too usually Countess ults at the end of her combo so if she like dashes in uh, ease, right clicks, and then tries to ult you. Typically, the stone wall will stun out her ultimate, which then stops you from taking the damage. Uh, so it could be good into that matchup as well if you're against like three physicals and a countess, and you don't really know which one to buy because the countess is killing you, but you also want some physical defense. Uh, I would recommend going with the stone wall. Uh, next ADC is Kira. Kira is pretty much the exact same way. The only difference is that I would say generally you go terminus uh, and you don't go imperator. Other than that, the build is pretty much the exact same. Uh, nothing really changes. The reason you go Terminus over Imperator is because Terminus uh, gives you lifesteal and Cura Ultimate allows you to lifesteal during the ultimate, which allows you to get a lot of value off the Terminus uh, in team fights if you can get away with it. Uh, if you don't think you're going to be able to really ult in team fights, I would just go Imperator to just get extra damage on your auto attacks. But if you're really trying to get a maximum value from the ult, you go Terminus. The reasoning for building the items are pretty much the exact same. Uh, Kira has a really good way to kill people with her Q. Her right click is a little bit longer range as well, which allows you to pick people off with Vanquisher. Uh, she scales pretty nice off attack speed due to her passive. And a lot of these items are pretty much the exact same for uh, Kira. So not too much different. Uh, the only... Uh, alternative like option item would be Envy. Envy can be really strong on Kira just because uh, when you dash, you can actually dash during your ultimate, which guarantees that you crit, but her ultimate can crit, which then guarantees that her ult does 10% bonus physical damage. So you can also potentially tech in like an Envy somewhere in here. Uh, maybe go something like this and go Envy last item. Uh, could be pretty solid. So that's something to maybe test around with and see if uh, you like it or not. I've heard that it's okay. I haven't really tried it myself, but I have heard that it's okay. So I think it is worth uh, mentioning from people that are better at ADC than myself. The next ADC on the list would be Murdoch. Uh, again, not much changes here. Uh, you wouldn't go Envy on them, but everything else is pretty much the exact same. I do think Lightning Hawk gets a little bit more value than Tainted Round, so I might maybe go something like this. He's very good at walking people down due to his E giving him a lot of movement speed, so you can get a lot more value from the slow from Lightning Hawk and just running people down, especially if you're in the lead. I would definitely recommend maybe going Lightning Hawk second instead of Sky Splitter second, and then going Sky Splitter instead of Tainted Rounds in the third slot. Uh, last item, uh, Imperator or Terminus. Again, depends on the game and depends what you need. Uh, more damage Imperator, more survivability, or more extended fights. Maybe go a little bit of a Terminus. Uh, Vanquisher, really strong on them. Let you get the executes with your ultimate, which could be really nice. Uh, no real necessary explanation for Sky Splitter. It just allows you to kill tanks. Uh, that is your tank killing item, and that is your job as an ADC is to kill tanks. So it allows you to get a, a lot of value. One alternative item that you could also get on... Uh, Murdoch specifically, which I think is extra valuable, is Dust Devil. You could maybe go with Dust Devil last item. This item gives you uh, power every time you auto attack. If you crit, you get two stacks. Uh, at six stacks, you get extra, uh, you get bonus power, and then you get uh, some movement speed. Between Dust Devil and Murdoch's E, you can actually get pretty fast and just start kiting people around in team fights. It's okay on like Kira and Drongo, but it's not as valuable in my opinion. I think on Murdoch, you get a little bit extra value because of his E, so it's a little bit more worth building on him in my opinion. But you can also try on some of the previous uh, mentioned characters like Drongo or Kira, in my opinion. Next up we have Revenant. Revenant's a little bit of a different character. You kind of build them a little differently. Uh, when I play Revenant, I would build him something like this. Uh, where you go Witch Stalker, which is a little bit of Omni Vamp. Uh, it gives you a little bit more power in the early game, which gives you actually a little bit more value in the early game than some of the other characters. The Liberator Crest doesn't actually give you power level 1. So the Rogue Crest, which is the one that goes into Witch Stalker, actually gives you a little bit more of a better trade potential in the early game. And then you go Vanquisher. It allows you to execute people. Uh, you have really easy ways to proc it. The Q is easy to hit. The Alt's easy to hit. The E's easy to hit. Uh, also allows you to get that really bursty, like 
last hit on your right click, which could be really nice in team fights. The second item you go is Imperator. This just allows you to scale. You scale off crit chance, so that you get extra power the more crit chance you have. And you're just a really heavy crit chance character. Your your last auto attack is guaranteed to crit. So if you have Imperator, you guarantee that that last shot does more damage. It also gives you a significant amount of power and just allows you to really start like two shotting people uh, once you get it online. Third, you go Demolisher. Uh, the reason you don't go any like attack speed item like uh, Tainted Rounds or Sky Splitter is you don't really value you don't get value from attack speed the same way other ADCs do due to the way Revenant has unique auto attacks. So Demolisher still allows you to hit the tanks, and then you're kind of just looking to chunk people with crits. Uh, very very strong character. Uh, this is how I would build him. I would not recommend building any attack speed items on him for the most part. Uh, fourth, you usually go with Terminus uh, generally. Uh, the reason you go Terminus is just lifesteal, again, very solid item, uh, very clean at what it does, gives you uh, the shield and the extra crit chance which you get extra value from because you're Revenant so you get a little bit more power. Last item I would typically say you get a Mesmer. The reason you get a Mesmer is because you kind of want to play like an assassin when you play Revenant. You don't really want to be a traditional ADC in your backline. You don't want to be going front to back. You kind of want to be uh, playing a flank and kind of coming around behind people and then trying to, you know, ult an ADC by himself or ult the mid laner by himself and then take a 1v1 in your, in your Shadow Realm ult. Mesmer just gives you better trades because you kind of absorb a a spell that the enemy team could be casting at you so it's just a really strong item last uh, alternatively you can go the dread or the uh, stonewall if you need that uh, but it is game dependent and i would you know kind of read the read the comp that you're playing against and read who you're trying to go on if maybe you're trying to go on the adc specifically it might be more valuable to get the stonewall because you're gonna get the extra protections which really lets you just insta win the trade uh if you're against the mage maybe look at like mesmer you know you're against like a gideon you might get more value off the mesmer if you're against like an assassin like Countess or something that might also be counter flanking you, you could be looking at like a Dread to try to stop you from getting one-shotted by her uh, as well. So those are kind of the three options, uh, but the base four items are usually pretty much the same on Revenant. You don't really swap them at all. Uh, Witch Doctor is really strong. One thing I didn't mention is you could get Ordis on Revenant. Uh, you can kind of read the game. If you think you're going to be able to get a lot of value off of it and get a lot of kills, you can start stacking permanent power, especially early game. Uh, so the way Ordis works is you activate it and then you get bonus speed and physical power. If you kill somebody within eight seconds of activating the Ordis, you gain three physical power permanently for the rest of the match. So if you can like snowball a little bit and you can get a couple stacks on this and get some kills, you can get like, you know, an extra, you know, three, four uh, kills, you get an extra 12, you know, three, like nine to 12 power. Uh, you can really just start to one shot people, especially with your, your last hit crit that just wallops last hit. Uh, very, very strong. Uh, it is game dependent. Usually I go Witch Doctor personally for the burst heal, uh, as well as the cleanse. Usually as an ADC, you're going to want to cleanse stuff. You're going to be the target in most fights. But if you think you can get away with it, Ordis is a fantastic option. Uh, I would definitely test both and see which one you like the most. I would generally recommend for new players Witch Doctor, but uh, Ordis is worth mentioning in my opinion. Next up we have Sparrow. Uh, Sparrow is pretty similar to uh, one of the builds that we'll talk about on TB. Uh, she does not really get any value from Vanquisher or uh, really a lot of these items honestly she's a lot more of an attack speed oriented character so generally you go something like this uh, and then you get a tainted rounds in here uh, she benefits a lot from attack speed uh, and a lot from on hits because she gets a stim from her e and then she has the aoe auto attacks on her ultimate so you usually get a liberator uh, just to cleanse if you can't get your ult off because you get cc'd you don't really get a lot of value so you kind of need to get the liberator in most games uh, and it's just a really strong uh, combo Stormbreaker gives you a little bit of wave clear and allows you to easily proc uh, on hit effects as well as to just get some bonus damage on your auto attacks. Uh, very easy to proc in your ultimate. You can actually just kind of one shot people sometimes when you get this item online with Sparrow. You just kind of ult Q and walk at them uh, with your ultimate and they just kind of die. As for the next rhythms, we've already kind of gone over them. Uh, Sky Splitter at your tank killer, uh, gives you attack speed. You kind of need to kill tanks. Tainted Rounds, fantastic item. It just allows you to do a little bit of extra magical damage, which procs twice whenever Stormbreaker procs. So you get double the value every fourth auto attack, basically. 
and that allows you to apply anti-heal which allows you to kill uh, tanks or healers uh, very easily demolisher fantastic item you need it to kill tanks and uh, just gives you a lot more damage in general uh, very good you do get a little bit of crit chance here so it can be pretty solid to sometimes maybe you slap in like an imperator last item if you think you can get away with it uh, typically i would go king's bane last item this gives you some more on hit effects which then proc more damage whenever stormbreaker procs as well as on your normal auto attacks it also gives you some more omni vamp and some attack speed so that can also be really nice it can allow you to kind of sustain in team fights a little bit if you are able to free cast a little bit and then all, all as well as any of the other ADCs, you can get a Mesmer, you can get a Dread, you can get a Stonewall. It depends on the game. If you feel that you might need a defensive option, these are kind of the three main defensive options for ADCs right now. There is uh, one last thing to mention with Sparrow. Sometimes you can go Eviscerator. If you're against a comp that doesn't have a lot of CC, let's say you're against like a FaZe and a Fang Mao and you know something else that doesn't really have a lot of CC, uh, I don't know, like a Gideon or something, doesn't really have a lot of like hard CC, it's just a lot of slows and things like that. You can sometimes get away with going Eviscerator. Uh, if you can get away with it, it is a fantastic option. It basically increases your attack speed when you activate it, and then for the next six seconds, every single time you auto attack, you deal increased damage, uh, true damage, and then you also do every auto attack that you land consecutively increases the damage uh, by another like 3% every time you land an auto attack. So you basically just start scaling like crazy, especially with your ultimate, because you can't miss. Uh, you get really easy auto attack uh, lands on most people. So it is, if you are against a low CC comp, you could try going Eviscerator and seeing if you can get it to work. Or if you just feel confident in your positioning and don't think you're gonna get stunned, you can also try Eviscerator. Typically, I would build something like this though, where you get Lib, uh, Stormbreaker, Sky Splitter, Tainted Rounds, Demolisher, and then a King's Bane usually, because you want some lifesteal. Or typically, I generally get a Stonewall because as a Sparrow, you're gonna be getting gone on a lot by the tanks or the frontline or the assassins, because you're kind of gonna be the target. Nobody wants to let you free cast. So having that extra stun can allow you to get a little bit more damage off a couple more autos and that can usually be the deciding factor for sparrow in team fights next up we have twin blast twin blast can kind of build the same build as sparrow where you go uh liberator into sky splitter Dorm sky splitter stormbreaker tanner rounds demolisher uh he can kind of do the same uh style of build usually i will go dust devil last on him he has a really good kite potential uh, and then you get a little bit of extra crit chance he doesn't really work super well with things like breach uh, not breach with things like terminus uh so you don't really get a ton of value from that kind of stuff so it is worth kind of mentioning that i would avoid kind of those things if you are going to go a lifestyle item i would go something like mutilator or uh king's bane last item very similar to sparrow she just gets a little bit more value uh he gets a little bit more value from dust devil than some of the other adcs Alternatively, you could run uh, a power build, which is something like this, where you go Witch Docker into Mind Razor, and then you go Pain Weaver. It gives you a little bit more kite potential. Uh, this is more of like a bursty build, like you're kind of doing a more ability based uh, style build, where you go Mind Razor into Pain Weaver. Pain Weaver gives you some movement speed when you use abilities, some pen. Uh, Mind Razor gives you AoE damage on all of your abilities and allows you to kind of perma clear wave, and then it gives you a ton of mana. So if you want to spam your abilities, this is kind of the way to go. You get Witch Stalker with this uh, build. It gives you a little bit more power on your abilities because you get power early game uh, on the crest, whereas the Liberator does not give you power. It gives you attack speed. The other benefit to Witch Stalker is that it gives you Omni Vamp, which means you can actually heal off of your abilities as opposed to just your auto attacks like the Liberator, which could be a lot more valuable. When you go this build, you usually go Perforator for your percent pen option. This is because it applies a slow on all of your abilities, which makes it really easy to chase people down, as well as giving you a lot of cooldown, which is kind of the, the whole basis of the build, is to just proc abilities over and over again with cooldown and, uh, you know, just spamming your cooldowns and then proccing item effects such as Inferno, a great option here. Uh, it just stacks, you just start getting dot damage on all of your uh, every third damage and you have two auto attacks. You can spam abilities, your Q procs two of the hits. So if you Q and then you hit one grenade, you should proc three hits right there, which then means that your Inferno is gonna proc. This gives you a lot of DPS on objectives as well as on tanks and allows you to still do a solid amount of DPS uh, to whoever you need to hit. Uh, even though you don't really have the tank killing items such as Sky Splitter. Last item of this build, you usually go Mutilator. Uh, it's just your lifesteal item. It, gives, it stacks the Omni Vamp with the Witch Doctor, which then gives you 12%. And it also gives you a little bit of bonus max HP when you hit people, and then does a little bit of percent health damage. 
which can also help you kill tanks, which is kind of the struggle that this build has uh, compared to the top build. This build is definitely a lot better against squishy comps and comps where you can just kind of one-shot people. If you're against like a phase or something, you can just throw a grenade, uh, hit her with a slow alter, and she just kind of dies. Uh, other things like that, if you catch a mid by themselves and you get the ability to just kind of channel your ult, you could just ult them and it'll do like 80% of their max HP. And you can just kind of blow people up. Uh, your Q will hit very hard with this build as well. Uh, and it's just a really strong build uh, to go. It's very safe. You just kind of spam your dash around and just use your abilities. You don't really auto that much. So either build is very valuable. I would say that you could also go Witch Stalker with this top build. You can go either or. I tend to prefer Witch Stalker because it's a little bit better early game. But you can go either or. One other thing to note is that in the bottom build, you can actually go Ordis. If again, if you can get away with it, they don't have a lot of CC or you feel confident in your positioning, you can kind of pop Ordis and then just start ulting somebody and you'll do like 90% of their HP if you have Ordis. Uh, and if you get enough stacks, you could actually one shot somebody from 100 to zero uh, with just your ultimate depending on the situation. So it's definitely worth uh, trying either of these builds on TB. Uh, I would say they are both very strong and I would just go to whichever one you prefer the most the bottom build with mind razor is a little bit better in the early game whereas i would say the top build with sky splitter and stormbreaker is a little bit better in the late game uh, as well so that's just something to be aware of lastly we have wraith wraith is kind of similar to uh, the second build on tb where i would build him pretty much the way that i would build him uh, in the mid video which is you go mind razor Painweaver, Perforator, and you get an Infernum, uh, as well as like an Omen. Typically, this is what my build would look like on Wraith, uh, although in ADC, it is your job to kind of kill tanks a little bit more, so it makes things like Vanquisher or Envy a little bit more viable, because your job is to kill the tanks, switching the Painweaver out for something like a Vanquisher, and then swapping uh, the Infernum out for something like an Envy could allow you to kill tanks more easily and allow you to get a little bit more value. So you either are building something like this, uh, where you go the Vanquisher second into Perforator and then Envy, or you are going to build something like this where you go the Omen in the third slot and then you get the Inferno Blast. Either one is strong, either one is viable. I would recommend trying both and seeing whichever one you like. I do think as an ADC though, you do get more value as uh, from things like Vanquisher than you would as a mid laner, which is why I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, you can also go Witch Docker. I think Witch Docker is the best. Uh, sometimes you can go Ordis too if you're confident in stacking it and using it correctly. Uh, you could definitely get away with Ordis. Usually if they're already on top of you, you're probably already dead as Wraith. Uh, so Witch Docker can be a little bit less valuable, but it is good against things that like are range CC, such as like a Richter Hook or like a Severog Root. I do just like Witch Docker personally. I think it's just a lot more consistent. But if you are good at Ordis, uh, it is very easy to stack and very easy to kind of scale out of control with this and just get to the point where you just start one-shotting people. So just something to note and uh, something that I think is important to think about when you're playing Wraith. But that's going to do it for this video. That is all of the ADC builds uh, that I would use. Uh, if you liked the video, let me know. Uh, I will be doing a video like this for the other three roles that I haven't done yet. I did mid yesterday. I will do support uh, jungle and offlane uh, at some point this week. I'm also going to do a tier list video at some point this week as well, uh, potentially after the three build guides to give me a little bit more gra uh, time to grasp the meta and kind of really shake out how the items and the patch has adjusted the balance of characters. Uh, but if you liked the video, uh, maybe subscribe or something. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching if you made it this far, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.